Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dane, your host of the Rocky Metal Guardian. It was not too long ago that I did a video of my top 25 favorite debut albums of all time. Well, today I'm going to do more great debut albums. While these do not crack my top 25, they're still great and they have to be mentioned. And there's no order to these. I'm not putting this one above that one and that sort of thing, but I am going to list them 30 through 1, but there's, but there's no order. So number 30 is the Allman Brothers debut. And I'm also going to go through, uh, not every song on each album, but I'm going to go through the songs that I like the most, that stand out the best for me. And some of these won't necessarily be, be the hits. So Allman Brothers, number 30, and it's not My Cross to Bear Anymore, is my second favorite song on this album. My, my first favorite, and perhaps my all-time favorite, is Whipping Post. I know that's cliched, but it is what it is. The live version on At the Fillmore is even better, but Whipping Post... And uh, Trouble No More. So those are the three songs. The whole album's great, but those are the three songs that stand out the best for me personally. Number 29 is the debut from Roxy Music. Uh, the U.S. version, because it has Virginia playing on it. All of Side 1 is just fabulous. Uh, perhaps it would. Perhaps it's one of the all-time great Side 1s of all time. Top 100, Top 150. I'd have to think about it, but it's definitely in Top 100, 150 of Side 1s of all time. Uh Brian Eno's Here Come the Warm Jets. Not enough. This this album is so underrated. I, I'm not the biggest Brian Eno solo uh, fan. Oh, when he gets super ambient, I, I like some of the stuff he did with um, Robert Fripp and others, but this solo album is, is, is in my opinion, the best one. Um, start to finish kind of thing, right? So Here Come the Warm Jets, Warm Jets by Brian Eno. All right, number 27 is the title, sorry, the debut album from the band Garbage. And this is one of those albums you have to listen with headphones because if you don't listen to it with headphones, you're going to miss out on so many of the sound effects and nuances. And it's it's no Dark Side of the Moon, but it's it's got it's got some great things going on that you would definitely miss if you didn't have the headphones on. Um, so that's, an, that's a necessity if you ask me. And the standout tracks for me are as, as Heaven is Wide, and Milk, the, the, the closing track, is just fabulous, and um, Only Happy When It Rains. Of course, that's a cliched choice, but those, those three, well, that one's cliche, but those three are my favorite, so uh, Garbage, number 27. Pearl Jam is next, number 26. Again, these are in no order, but I'm, I'm just going through the list, if you will. Uh, standout tracks, Why Go, Porch. The two, hev the two heaviest ones for me personally. Um, Garden and Black are the two slower ballad songs that are very emotive and um, resonate with me the most. They just they just do that to me still. And just a great debut album from Eddie Vedder and crew. So number 25 is the New York Dolls debut. It's a shame they didn't do more uh, glam slash proto-punk, if you will. Anyway, so number 25, New York Dolls. I'm not going to post any or say any, uh, say rather any uh, songs that stand out because I, I can listen to this from start to finish. And I, I love them equally. They're all, they're all, I love them all so much and I don't put one before the other. So just a great album. Um, Nine Inch Nails, Pretty Hate Machine. And this is, this is something I discovered right when it came, almost right when it came out. And like the New York Dolls album, um, I don't want to say Head Like a Hole is my favorite. It's the one we all know and love from this album. It was the, the, the hit on the album, but every song in here is, is a winner. So it's, in a sense, like the New York Dolls album. Um, I, don't, I don't have to pick one over the other. Just all of them are good. So um, Nine Inch Nails, Pretty Hate Machine. The debut from Great White, just called Great White. This is when, unfortunately, after this album, they got more commercial and... Um, I don't want to say soft, but arena rock, kind of like what Def Leppard did after High and Dry, or I'm sorry, after Pyromania, um, trying to plead to a more broad mainstream crowd by getting um, hair metally. And I, I've the, I saw them live open up for Judas Priest during the um, Defenders of the Faith tour, and they just blew me away. And it's too bad. Now I like some of the later stuff. But this is this is my favorite one. So the great the, the great white debut. Next is Journey's first album, and you have of a lifetime to play some music. And if I'm pronouncing this right, the in, one of the instrumentals, Coho Tech, which they're still playing 
um, today. In fact, on the new Sean uh, CD, new Sean Journey Through Time, it's on there. Well, I haven't heard it yet, but it, I will, and it's it's on there. So, and there's a, there's also an instrumental called Topaz that I like. The whole album is great. It, it's 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 shame it's so underrated, but this is one of those debuts from start to finish. This is glorious. I listen to this album all the time. All right, so after that, we have the first Motorhead album. And while not as good as what comes in Overkill and what follows all after, the, some of the stuff that follows after that, this is a miraculous album in the sense that you finally have Lemmy doing his own thing after being kicked out of um, Hawkwind. So this is, this is if you're a Motorhead fan, you have to get this. This is a 40th anniversary out there that I have, and it's remastered and it's a, that sort of thing. So Motorhead's debut, Motorhead. Number 20, MC5, which is a live album. And this is this is a great um, proto punk band, if you will. I don't like much of what they did after. I like the album that follows that. The two after that it doesn't do much for me, and it's a shame because um, they're one of those bands, unfortunately, where their debut, which is a live album, their debut is their best album. So MC Five, got to give props to MC Five. And similarly, another proto punk band coming in at number number nineteen is the Stooges' debut, like the New York Dolls and like so many albums or many albums rather, or some albums, excuse me. This is one of those albums where I don't have a favorite. I just like everything that's on there equally, but it's still a great album. So the Stooges' um, first album. If I had to, if I had to pick a favorite, um, it would be the, the, the last song, the closing song. So the Stooges. Uh, the next one is so beloved of me, and that is the punk band The Damned. Their first album is called Damn, Damn, Damned. You have New Rose, Neat, 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 Fan Club. Uh, and I Feel All Right, which is the Stooges cover. This is a fabulous punk rock album. I'm not a big punk fan, but I'm a big the, I'm a big lover of The Damned, and this is a great album, also from start to finish. So uh, number 18, The Damned. Number 18 is Meatloaf, Bat Out of Hell. Well, initially I did not like this set first. Um, it didn't. It really didn't take me um, long to come around. So And like so many artists, um, it's a shame that this is his best album. So... That out of hell. Next is number 16, Melissa by Merciful Fate. Initially, not a big fan of Merciful Fate because it, you know, if you think Getty Lee's voice is high, if you think um, Jeff Tate's voice is high, this is like 10 times higher than that. And it, it took me a while to to, um, to like. Just some bands, vocalists, I just can never come around to liking, but um, I eventually came around to King Diamond's voice. Uh, number 15 is Bonded by Blood by Exodus. Um, the only album I like by them. And another example of, you know, your your best album is your first effort, unfortunately. So um, Exodus, Bonded by Blood, number 15. It's up there with Metallica's first, Megadeth's first. Um, you know, all the major four. Anthrax's first or second, right? It's, it's, it's that good. Um, Steve Ray Vaughan's Texas Flood, of course, the title track. And um, Testify and Rude Mood. Those are my three favorite songs on Texas Flood. And yes, it is a Texas Flood style blues, hence the title, right? So another person we lost too early. Coming in at number 13 is Ozzy Osbourne's Blizzard of Oz. Um, originally, it was supposed to be a band called Blizzard of Oz, but it, it became solo name Ozzy Osbourne, and, and that became the title of the album. Uh, Randy Rhodes. Don't have to say anything more, do I? All right. Number 12, Molly Hatchet. The first album. It's got that Frank Frazetta album cover with the mysterious loan. Um, I forget what that figure is called in many of his artworks. Reminds you of Lord of the Rings, if you've ever seen the movie, that scene where uh, Frodo and his other three compatriots are hiding, and the, there's a pan close up to the creature on horseback. One of the ring race kind of looks like that. Um, but album cover aside, a great start to finish album. And no, I'm not putting this above um, Ozzy and Stevie Ray. There's no order here again, as I said. I'm just, this is the how I put my, I got to put this down, I got to put this down, and it just came that way. So again, no order, but Molly Hatchet, Dreams I'll Never See, and Cheatin' Woman. Uh, different version from Leonard Skinner's uh, Cheatin' Woman, just happens to be the same title. And Molly Hatchet, if you like Southern Rock like I do, did us all a favor. They, 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 they could never fill the shoes of Leonard Skinner, but they filled a void after the Leonard Skinner plane crash. So I have to give props to um, the crew that is Molly Hatchet. And they're still around today. Not original band, of course, but um, 
still still putting out records. Some of them good, some of them not so good. Um, next is Celtic Frost's Morbid Tales. Talk about a heavy, heavy album band I took to right away in high school. Had to go to the uh, import vinyl record store downtown New Orleans when I was a teenager to get this. Had it on vinyl and everything. Got it on CD now. Um, great, great, great heavy metal album. Um, next is Ted Nugent's debut album. Uh, I don't need to hear Stranglehold ever again, thanks to the radio. It's funny how some songs um, you hear over and over again, whether on the radio or not, you never, they, never, you never, they never get old. But this is one that has grown tired for me personally. But that song aside, you have Motor, Motor City, Madhouse, and uh, Snakeskin Cowboys. And other than what I mentioned, um, the whole album is good. So, I mean, to say... To say that Stranglehold isn't good anymore because I'm tired of it, that, that would be a fallacy. It is a good song. I just I don't need to hear it ever again. But the whole album is good, start to finish is what I meant. All right, next is Mechanical, Renas- Sorry, Mechanical Resonance by Tesla. And the standout tracks for me are Easy Come, Easy Go, Coming At You Live, Too Late For Love, and my all-time favorite, Rock Me To The Top. So heavy. They've been classified as a hair metal band, but they're more like a little bit hair metal, but they're more blues-based um, songwriting. So... And do some acoustic stuff as well. And if you're into Tesla and you don't have it, I highly recommend the Replugged Live. Uh, all right, moving on. Budgie's first album, songs like Rape of the Locks and uh, Nude, Disintegrating, Nude Disintegrating Parachute Woman are the standout tracks for me. And Guts, those are the three I like the most. ACDC's High Voltage, got to mention that. Great album, start to finish. This was when ACDC was king, right? Or move, Or they were king. Uh, the album Nola by Down, right? I'm a New Orleans boy, and yeah, there's a little bias here, but um, there's some days where I like Down more than Pantera, and some days where I like Pantera more than Down, but Down's debut is just fabulous. All right, next, Tons of Sobs by Free. I'm not going to say much about this, except this is one of those albums that the blues, the heavy blues, the guitar from Paul Kossoff, and the voice of Paul Rogers is just so intoxicating. This is so fabulous of an album. You got to get it. You got to listen to it first and then get it. You, you're going to like it. Um, next is Aerosmith's debut you have Dream On, Mama Kin, and Walkin' the Dog. On this album, Walkin' the Dog is my favorite. And next is the Canadian power trio heavy metal band Exciter. Got their name from the band Judas Priest. And their first debut album is called Heavy Metal Maniac. I'm sorry, Heavy Metal Maniac. That's the, there's a title track called that. And then there's a song I love called Iron Dogs. The first half, it's, it's kind of moving along at a quick pace, but then it doubles in speed after that. So it kind of speed metal, thrash metal kind of a band. Um, great album, Exciter, Heavy Metal Maniac. Next is, and this is a curveball, um, a band that unfortunately didn't last very long. The band is called Icon, and their debut is also called Icon. It's got this weird, um, I don't have a prop to show you because um, I don't have it on CD anymore. I just have it on MP3 format. But it's got a great album cover of, this, of, of the sky, and his eye looks like it's melting sideways. It's really cool. And the, the, the standout track, the whole album's great, but the standout track is uh, World War. We're in a world war. You know that song? So it's a great song. And then finally, um, not finally, sorry, Badlands debut with Jakey e. Lee and Ray Gillen, another person who left us uh, too soon. So another great album start to finish. Badlands is an amazing album. This close to being in my top 25. So, uh, And then finally, two more albums. Again, no order. None of these are in any order. Motley Crue's first album, Too Fast for Love. You have the title track. My favorite songs on here are It's the Tie Between Live Wire and Merry Go Round. And finally, Blue Oyster Cult's debut. Um, you have Here Come the Last Days of May and so many other songs. Uh, here Come the Last Day. Here Comes. Here Then Came the Last Day of May, excuse me. My favorite song on that first album and definitely in my top five. Blue Oyster Cult songs of all time so there you have it more great debut albums in no order but great debut albums that i had to mention uh please post below in your comments what you think of these did i still miss some that sort of thing i'd love to hear what you have to say don't forget to uh, click that notification and subscribe button thanks for watching